Please be reminded that the Prince George's County Public School Administrative Procedures regarding appropriate use of technology, social media, and email continue to apply to our online instruction. In addition, this session may not be recorded without the instructor's consent. The description of the applicable procedures is provided online in the Student's Right Responsibility Handbook. Thank you for your cooperation. This is sent on behalf of Charles Herbert Flowers High School Administration. All right, guys. So this week, the materials that you'll be needing for your, your testillation will be some scrap paper so that you can cut your three by three card. You'll be using the ruler with that and that's gonna be three inches by three inches. You'll need a pencil, okay? You're gonna need color pencils. You'll need the scissors so that when you cut the sides off of your card, you can do that. And then you'll need some tape to tape them down. It won't, would be a good idea to have yourself a permanent marker or some markers so that when you trace your shapes, it shows up really dark. Then you're going to need your project paper and that can come straight out of your sketchbook and you can um, work up your project. I'm just sitting here playing around with these large, very large sea pods that came from nature and I was noticing how well they fit together. And you just put one in front of the other, in front of the other and you go from the largest down to the small one. How fun is that? But you know, sometimes things don't interlock very well. And if you like doing puzzles, then I guess we would have to try to work with puzzle pieces. Let's see. Let me try to put this puzzle together that I have here, this turkey bird and a pumpkin. Oh, that doesn't look like that goes there. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, so much for that. Hey, why don't we just make our own little puzzle? Okay, you ever heard of testillations? Testillations are repetitive shapes with patterns that connect or fit together like puzzle pieces. They can slide together or they can rotate around a grid, but they never overlap. So the first thing I need for us to do is we're gonna measure out a piece of paper that is three inches by three inches both ways. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut that out after we draw it going to be three inches on all sides for a square and then we cut it out all right so now I have a perfect little square and sometimes if it, if you have index cards it's good to use index cards because those lines help you align your work okay. we're gonna start out by drawing on our three by three three inches on all sides we're going to go to the upper left hand corner and we're going to start drawing just any old type of line and whatever however you want to do it and then you're going to end back in the corner we're also going to go back to that same left hand corner and we're going to draw any old type of line there as well and go back to the corner okay so we have two parts this is my first part this is my second part and I'm gonna cut them out okay now I have my separate pieces. I have the top piece and the left piece. Now it's very important that you have your tape. And I'm going to take this piece, lift them up and go straight to the bottom with it. Notice how I did not cut any part of this because I need the whole piece to go to the bottom so it matches up. And then I tape it down. Then I take the left side and I go straight across to the right side and attach it on the opposite side and tape it. 
Now I have this very unique shape. The next thing I want to do is look at my unique shape. And I would want to use my imagination. What does this shape remind me of? And when I look at it here, it looks like fish lips and fins. And this part down here could be the water. So then I'm going to put some implied lines. Okay. And I've already done this. I have implied lines so that you can see how that same shape has turned into a fish. Okay. And now it's time for me to begin tracing my shape. All right, so I have my first shape and then I slide them over and I match this line and I begin to trace again. Notice I did not overlap. And obviously I don't have to draw that middle line. And I just keep going. And going and going. So I can do that all the way across. And then if I come back up here, we notice that the pieces fit perfectly here, just like a puzzle. And I can trace that upward that way. Make sure that when you do tape on, put your tape on, that you do a good job because you don't want your materials to be flimsy. All right, so I can go up this way as many times as I can, go this way as many times as I can, and then I will have a finished piece of a bunch of fish. So what you'll do later on is you'll go back and you'll add all your implied lines, and each time you'll change the color. You can color it with your color pencils, you can color it, you can paint it. Each one can be a different color or you can come up with some kind of color pattern. But whatever you come up with, it's going to be a rel uh, repetitive slide type of motion. Now, if you like a challenge, if you like a challenge, there's another method called the rotation method. So let's say we go back to our original pattern and we want to do the rotation. So then instead of us taking this piece off, which originally came from here, and this one, I'll pull him off for now. He originally came from here. When you want to do the rotation, you take him around the adjacent corner. So then basically what I would do is take this guy and take him around the corner and tape him down and take this guy and take him around the corner and tape him down. And now I have a different shape. All right. And then when I get ready to trace that one, that one's going to be more of a rotational. It has to turn. So I will trace it. Then I have to turn it to fit. You notice that? I was here. Now I turn it to fit. You have to align that into the puzzle piece where it fits. And again, I turn it to fit. And trace. And then I turn it again to fit. Now notice this should fit along here and there. Just fit it right perfect. Look at that. Perfect. Now you can have fun with this one. Now how do we know that this is a rotational? Right here is the axis. Right there. We know that these four corners come together and it creates like a circular axis. Now you can determine what this looks like. If I look at this one, uh, I don't know, maybe he's a pig with a snout and eyebrows and his little feet. 
And maybe that's his little tail. And then I have to do the same thing over and over again. The little pig snout. It doesn't always have to be a living thing. It could be, it could be um, abstract. It could have just fun colors. Okay, so basically this, whatever you make it, it becomes a repeat all the way around. And again, you to make, to fill your um, space, you would just find that matching corner to go further out. Here it is. And then you keep filling up your paper with this one. So we have two methods. We have the slide method, which is the first one, the fish. And then we have the rotational method, which is when you take the the pieces that you cut off and go to the adjacent side for the slide you go to the opposite side for the other one you go to the adjacent side now for that we have a completed rotational turn it around so that you can see it and when i made this shape here i made this shape and when I looked at it, it reminded me of a fancy lady. A fancy lady with bangs, fancy eyelashes, curls in her hair, lipstick. And I made it kind of multicultural. So every lady is different, but they still fit together in a circular way as I turn, 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 turn my pattern and fit it and I turn it. This is a rotational tessellation. Okay. Now I had a few um, different ones. Let me show you. And this one's a little simple. This is a slider. And this is the fat man. And every time the fat man had on a different suit. And he's pretty cool. I just invite you to always use your imagination when you look at your shape. You can turn it into anything that your imagination allows you to see. And then the last one I have here, this one is a two-headed man. Let me see if you can see that one. That's a two-headed man, and I believe he's a rotational also. Very interesting results. Now this is one that I made and I used my imagination on it. And if you can see how I drew it in, it's a horse. It's a little blurry there. But anyway, this one's like a little horse giddy upping around. And he would be pretty interesting if we were to work that one up also. But the main thing is that you start with your little square piece and you cut your sides. You draw in with your pencil. So good luck guys with making this testillation. Testillations are a combination of art and mathematics combining to create a design that is very intriguing. Um, it has a level of complexity to it, but they are beautiful when you are finished.